Hello everyone, today we'll learn how to use the schema tool. So let's get started. Uh, the schema tool is an important uh, tool that we, that, we, that we can use if you want to generate smart contract code uh, very quickly. And uh, with more languages being supported now, the schema tool becomes all the more relevant for you to get started easily and quickly with. If you want to learn more in detail about how the schema tool works and the various data types and uh, and everything there's uh you can go to the wiki and there's the, under the wasm vm section you'll find the schema tool details you can define a lot of uh, a, a lot of different types of data types here uh, there are various uh, file modes that you can use either yaml or json uh, whichever you are more comfortable with uh, currently, the schema tool with uh, it, it will support three different languages: Go, Rust, and TypeScript. And all these can be auto-generated the code base as well. So we'll see how to do that. Um, there are various uh, type definitions as well, uh, which will be uh, which which you can uh, configure around. And uh, TypeScript is obviously the latest addition, so there might be some parts where it's not required or it's missing, uh, which will be updated in subsequent versions. Um, so let's get started. First of all, we need to build the build the schema tool. You'll find that uh, we can build it using this, or if you can, or if you have already used, you know, make it install, then that would just build all the different tools by itself. Once we do this, um, we'll see that it has created a binary called schema here. Now, um, if you if you if now you either we can you know move this to our user bin and then use it uh, on a on a global level, or you can um, or you can use it uh, in in a more in a more traditional sense. So let's let's try to let's try to do uh, do something. If you have already uh, you know moved uh, if you have set your go bin or go path to a global value, then probably the binary would have been created over there by itself. If you're using Windows or something, uh, then it would by default be creating it at that stage. Uh, so it says permission denied, so we can either, you know, pseudo surpass it and do it. It's not required to do it, and uh, we can obviously choose not to do anything, any of this at all. Uh, then you can, you can just go inside the contract, and then you will find a wasm section. And inside this wasm, we can just say, you know, in it, and we can say our contract names. Um, let's give testing for now. And once we give this, it says that it's initiating testing. So if we look at this, there's a folder created testing and there's a schema.yaml file, which is already there. Now we can either go inside this and also view it from our uh, terminal. What you will see is that in this YAML, there's a name, there's a description. There's, you can define the different structs and type definitions as we saw here. Uh, there are different type definitions that's allowed to be defined. So make sure that you have gone through all of these uh, details before you are uh, before you are trying to uh, configure this part. And once you have made the necessary changes, you, you, we can we can just do something like uh, go, and this will generate a go uh, based uh, smart contract language in our in our uh, in this same directory. So once we do this, we'll see that there's two folders as created go, which has all the uh, definitions like, you know, main.go, uh, which, which will have the on load functions. And this inside the testing, we will see that there's, you know, testing.go, which has the actual smart contract. So all of the uh, schema.yaml uh, functions like init, set owner, and get owner, they are now created here. Like, you know, there's a function set owner, there's view get owner, and there's a function in it. Um, this is a simple smart contract that is uh, right now auto-generated. We can obviously uh, configure it according to our need and requirement. Uh, this and the init will obviously be called once with this owner, which will set the agent ID. The set owner, which will set any other owner as the owner of this, uh, as this entity, and the get owner will just fetch the agent ID. So any uh, the the funks will is actually doing a state transition. The views is just uh, fetching the fetching the current state and uh, displaying it, displaying it to us. So every function will result in a transaction, and every view is just a function call. 
and uh, we can and the other, other others are just to support the changes that's going on here if you are aware of go uh, if if you are aware of how tiny go works you can obviously you know look into more of it this and uh, generate uh, the and uh, generate the dot wasm file from here alternatively if you are more aware of how rust works then you can also generate a rust contract you will now see there's the cargo.toml file um, you can obviously change the author name, the description, and everything, the licensing um, to Apache 2.0. You can have MIT or something, some other license, uh, the version code as you are more modifying it further. And there's a source file which is created, and there's a similar structure that, that you will now recognize from our goal uh, function. So, all of this, all these files are also present in the Rust code base, uh, in which we have you know, the set owner, the view get owner, and the init functions. Um, what if we try to add a new um, function right here? So let's say we try to add, say, delete owner. So trying to add a new function here. The reason is not really much. I'm just trying to, we're just trying to see if uh, this will work and how easy the goal is to just uh, showcase how easy it is to configure and regenerate the code. Now, all you have to do is now at this point just run schema rust again and it will regenerate with a delete owner now so the delete owner smart uh, function is also also generated now and we can write more uh, business logic at this point uh, once you have all of this um, what we'll also need to do because this is a because this is inside a workspace so we will have to uh, add it to the workspace members here so we'll have to add our uh, smart contract directory the, the smart contract project that we just created over here and now if we do wasm back build it should just build a dot wasm uh, a, a dot wasm file which will be which we can deploy uh, wasm back is a uh, library that that we are using right now to build the rust based smart contracts and uh, we can obviously um, and if you are if you're trying to build it from go then you'll have to use tiny go build uh, this is the way to how do you install a wasm pack so let's just try to do that and uh, once we do that um, it's just checking and it will generate very soon this will just take a minute in the meantime, this is also defined uh, mentioned over here on how you can uh, on on how you can use this schema tool to generate all of that. So if you are building from Go, then you have, then you can build it by tiny Go build target, and we can give a target as wasm and uh, from inside this file. If you are building by Rust, it's just wasm back build. If you are building by TypeScript, then it's uh, this is including the TypeScript form. Um, we can also do the same thing uh, with doing this uh, schema. Okay, so before that, just that our inside our package now we'll see that there is a testing bg dot wasm. This is a binary, so this is not this won't be displayed over here. But our file is not created. We can also uh, uh, generate a TypeScript uh, body. So if you are aware of TypeScript or how that works, this will this will provide you with the necessary tool to get started. And now, if you are more acquainted with the front-end development with TypeScript, you can just edit it and get a, get, get, go right ahead. Uh, now, our package is actually created over here. So let's just try to, um, and, and we, if once we have the wasm uh, pack, we can just uh, get back and uh, to our main directory because our wasp and wasp CLI is running here. So what we'll do is we'll just uh, run the wasp over here uh, and on the below and on the top we'll just try to deploy uh, we'll just try to deploy uh, the, the dot wasm uh, the dot wasm smart contract all right so let's just uh, try to do the same thing now what we'll have to do now at this point is uh, to run wasp cli chain and we can do deploy contract um and here you will see that this is uh, i have a previous code from here i'll just have to edit this and let me just write here testing 
and uh, I'll edit this as well and I'll write testing uh, wasn't time is, is, is what we are using um, at this point um, this might change in the future but for now this is what we are going with and uh, we can just do the uh, wasm and that should just deploy our smart contract it's just uh, that easy to even without knowing a lot of rust or a lot of Gol golang or typescript you can just get go right ahead and create your own smart contract all you have to do is edit this yaml file and you don't have to know what you're doing and uh, you can just deploy it right away um that's it that's it for the schema tool um, and uh, i'll see you in the next one thank you